Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 7 on management of water quality in lecture number 30, today we will discuss about the environmental guidelines for water quality management. So, some of the important topics covered in this lecture includes water quality management, monitoring, water quality guidelines and steps in water quality management. So, the key words for today's lecture water quality management and environmental guidelines. So, as we discussed earlier, so this water quality management is a uh, main uh, say we have to deal with uh, most of the time say watershed based water quality management. So, it is one of the important issue which we have to deal uh, in water related issues like water resource management or water say uh, watershed based uh, uh, say water resource management uh, etcetera. So, it is not only the quantity of the water, but quality of the water is also important. So, that is what we are discussing in the last few lectures. So, as we discussed uh, say for surface water or ground water, there are various sources of pollution like uh, uh, say ground water or uh, say surface water, the pollution sources can be different. And then uh, we will be discussing about how we can control this pollution uh, and then wherever polluted how we can remediate. So, that is what uh, we were discussing in the last few lectures. So, now as far as water quality management is concerned as we discussed in one of the earlier lectures. So, we need a, a very uh, strict guidelines so that uh, we can go according to that guidelines. So, uh, first of all the guideline means say as far as the water quality is concerned what are the parameter values uh, say which we can go maximum uh, or minimum and what are the other uh, things as far as the parameters are concerned. So, that is one thing and then uh, what frequently what say the frequency of taking the samples so that um, we should know we can we have to constantly monitor say the say whether it is surface water or ground water whether the quality is maintaining or not. So, that way we have to see and then what are the um, methodologies which we can adopt to keep this uh, water quality management. So, that way we need uh, uh, say uh, guidelines as far as the water quality management is concerned. So, water quality management is for a great deal controlled by authorization of discharges of dangerous substances for which monitoring of discharges, effluents and influenced by surface uh, or ground water is essential. So, say if you consider surface water say like uh, river water or lake water or if you consider ground water, then we have to see that uh, say, uh, say uh, as far as the say if we once we uh, say put certain uh, say measures say I mean the, the guidelines say like uh, this much should be the quality or say various parameters the maximum limit or minimum li limit uh, once we specify uh, say and then uh, this uh, say we have to strictly follow this th th through certain guidelines. And then um, say, uh, say authorities say we have to strictly monitor this what way it is going whether the pollution is taking place or whether pollution is uh, reduced or whatever way. So, we have to uh, see that uh, some uh, like um, uh, state pollution control board authorities or uh, central pollution control board authorities. So, like that various um, uh, authorization agencies uh, should look into uh, the, the, the quality issues or the uh, pollution, pollu pollution problems. So, that way uh, when we look into water quality management and uh, uh, water quality management guidelines. So, there can be in the guidelines related to national level like uh, say for example, India Central Pollution Control Board uh, is there which, uh, which is the uh, authorized agency to look into the various water quality management issues and then it is uh, uh, guidelines formulations. And similarly, we can have also state level. So, various states say uh, we can have uh, various policies and then uh, regulations as far as the uh, water quality management is concerned. So, then uh, say presently say as we can see presently the quality and availability of the fresh water resource is most uh, pressing of the many environmental challenges say for example, national or national horizons. So, if you consider say India or either, either any country is concerned uh, say uh, the, 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 the quality of the fresh water whatever we are getting. So, that is uh, the availability as well as the quality is the main issue. So, now as the population is increasing say like geometric increase in population coupled with the rapid urbanization, industrialization and agriculture development. Uh, so, uh, this has resulted in high impact on uh, quality and quantity of water. So, as we discussed in some of the previous lectures, quantity is a main issue. 
say whether sufficient quantity of water is available say for example, for domestic industrial agriculture or the recreational purposes and then uh, say for each purposes or each uses as we have seen earlier uh, the, the, there are certain norms as far as the various parameters are concerned they say the maximum limit or minimum limit. So, uh, the, the quality uh, that way is a main issue especially say in a country like India where the, the population is exploding and then uh, number of um, new new cities are coming and uh, rapid urbanization is taking place. So, that way uh, there should be national benchmarks to assess the potential or actual environment of uh, socially uh, relevant resource users such as uh, water resource uh, say it is uh, the quantity of the water and the quality of the water. So, there should be national benchmarks. So, that way we can see that the Bureau of Indian Standards has come up with certain guidelines as far as the water quality management is concerned and then um, say the, the, the uh, various parameters say whatever the say for was it drinking or other purpose how we can, we have to we should have. So, that way uh, there should be uh, as far as say total water water quality total water quality management is concerned we have to see uh, the the uh, norms are available and these norms are strictly followed as far as the management is concerned. So, there should be scientific basis uh, for the development of site specific criteria uh, so, so, so that these are these criteria are called guidelines and then objectives or standards indicators. So, as we have seen certain indicators or standards should be there to achieve the the, uh, the quality of the water say for example, drinking wa water standards or any other uh, for any other use. So, scientific tools for assessing risk say like um, with the existing concentration of persistent uh, or bioaccumulative and uh, toxic substances in the ambient environment. So, as far as environment is concerned whether it is um, air, water or soil. So, we have to come up with uh, uh, certain uh, uh, say um, uh, tools to uh, assess the risk say for example, uh, we have to monitor the the various parameters say as far as water quality is concerned and then there should be scientific tools to assess the, the whether we are meeting the, the set guidelines. So, that way a number of issues are there as far as uh, water quality uh, management is concerned. When we deal with the water quality management, so uh, say generally we call it as environmental water quality. So, environmental water quality means the ambient water quality relates to water bodies such as lakes, rivers, or oceans or aquifers. So, uh, we say that uh, the, the water quality uh, say uh, which is very much related to the environment whether it is uh, say the aquatic body like uh, lakes, rivers, ocean or whether it is uh, the ground water systems. So, we have to see that the ambient water quality uh, and uh, its um, uh, environmental values or particular values are met. So, parameters for water quality say as we discussed earlier this depends on the intended use. So, as we, we have seen earlier say we are for example, if you are using water for drinking purpose then uh, that uh, the, 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 the uh, guidelines which we will be setting for various parameters will be different than say for example, the if we are using for agricultural purposes. So, water quality standards uh, we have to mention uh, depending upon the intended use. So, water quality standards uh, these are focused on water treated for uh, human consumption or industrial use or for the environment like uh, ecological needs. So, we have to see the, uh, the standards as far as water quality st standards are concerned whether it is human consumption or industrial use or say ecological needs. Say we have to see uh, say water first of all we have to set the standards and then we have to continuously monitor and then see that uh, the standards are met for the, the for the particular uh, water uh, say which we are utilizing for the particular purpose. So, water quality standards uh, say we can see that uh, there will be standards for surface water or ground water and this may vary significantly due to different conditions or uses. Say for example, surface water generally uh, we take from the rivers, uh, lakes or reservoirs, but in ground water we are pumping out from the aquifer system. So, that way uh, the standards uh, say slightly vary uh, say depending upon the use or depending upon the, the uh, say the extraction of the water is concerned. Say for example, the hardness of the water say industrial purpose if say we have to see the hardness of the water then the ground water is concerned when you are pumping then the hardness may be higher depending upon the location from which we are pumping. So, that way the water quality standards may change 
uh, whether according to surface water or uh, ground water. So, uh, uh, then say uh, also like uh, say for example, the toxic uh, substances and microorganisms say uh, which is a health hazard for non drinking purposes such as irrigation, uh, swimming uh, or fishing, uh, rafting, boating and industrial use. So, this will be say all these things the standards will be different uh, depending upon the intended use and then uh, uh, whether it is depending upon the source also like uh, surface water or ground water uh, it, it will be uh, varying. So, then uh, say if you consider the modern uh, water quality laws. So, this modern water quality laws specify uh, the protection of water resource depending upon use as we have seen whether it is ground water there may be certain specific norms as far as the protection is concerned or if it is surface water there may be some other specific uh, norms. So, like um, uh, say for example, uh, uh, say depending upon the use uh, as a minimum or retention of current uh, quality standards. So, like that uh, there will be uh, variations uh, uh, as far as the uh, water quality uh, laws or its management is uh, concerned. So, then uh, as we, we were discussing, so uh, as far as water quality is concerned, um, uh, we should have certain guidelines and then uh, when we are preparing this guidelines, say uh, we have to first uh, say depending upon our objectives, uh, we have to set the goals and then uh, uh, we have to see the uh, specific guidelines to achieve these uh, goals. So, let us look what are the important uh, goals as far as water quality guidelines are concerned. So, these are given in the, the in these slides. So, science based goals say like uh, different kinds of goals can be there say science based goals or performance indicators uh, say for example, regional, national or international management strategies uh, for toxic substances. So, if you consider specific uh, ty type of toxic to toxic substance uh, we have to see say uh, th this um, standards or the guidelines may vary uh, for the for the particular region or particular nation or uh, say international standards uh, may be uh, varying depending upon uh, say uh, what kind of uh, use or uh, say for example, the American standards will be different from uh, European standards or it will be different from uh, Indian standards. Uh, then uh, interior management objectives say for persistent uh, 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 bioaccumulative and toxic substance to track progress towards their uh, virtual elimination. Say for example, say some specific uh, toxic substances we have to virtually eliminate or the, the bioaccumulative or bioorganism we have to eliminate from the uh, particular water which we are using. So, accordingly uh, we have to set the goals. And then indicators uh, of ecotoxicology uh, like relevant concentrations um, of uh, persistent or bioaccumulative or toxic substances for the purpose of improving uh, analytical detection and quantification capabilities are needed. Uh, uh, when we set the uh, specific goals as far as the uh, water quality guidelines are concerned. So, accordingly uh, we should have the uh, tools to evaluate and the effectiveness of uh, say uh, point source controls so, or the non point source controls are concerned. So, as we discussed that the, the, the pollutant source can be point source or non point um, pollutant sources. So, the point sources we can easily identify and then uh, we can uh, evaluate it and then we can try to control it. So, that way uh, we can set our uh, water quality guidelines depending upon uh, say uh, from where the pollutant source can come whether it is um, uh, point source or it is um, non point source uh, accordingly uh, we can uh, set our goals. And then uh, that way there should be a scientific basis for environment regulations and benchmarks uh, or targets in the assessment and remediation. So, when we deal with water quality management then uh, we should have um, specified environmental regulations or rules um, uh, or laws and then uh, we should have the benchmarks say to say that uh, okay, this should be the, the particular limit of particular substances uh, in a water in the water which is for specified use or the say for example, the waste water coming from industrial source or the municipal source. So, that should meet uh, certain criteria, certain guidelines or certain standards before it is uh, say put into the rivers or lakes or to the to the ocean. So, that way there should be certain benchmarks 
or targets uh, say as far as the 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 water quality management issues are concerned and this can be either for assessments or it can be for uh, remediation also so now let us look into various issues related to water quality uh, guidelines so, uh, water quality guidelines actually as we discussed uh, this guideline shows values for, uh, for indicators and are des uh, designed to ensure that uh, various, various environmental values uh, of waters are protected. Say for example, if we consider say the in particular water for drinking or other purpose say arsenic limit or chloride limit or the total dissolved solids limit or BOD limit or COD limit like that, uh, uh, we have to uh, specify the indicators and then uh, accordingly the environmental values to be uh, specified and we have to ensure that these are uh, met uh, for the particular samples which we will be doing uh, as, as, the, as the, the water quality monitoring is concerned. So, uh, th there will be as far as the environmental uh, values are concerned, uh, 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 main nationally recognized uh, uh, environmental values for uh, waters are say for example, ecosystem values. So, uh, the water which we are using for ecological needs or ecological um, uh, water use. So, for that the certain specified um, uh, environmental values we can prescribe and then uh, ecosystem protection say like um, say we can come up with the guidelines as far as the the uh, the aquatic plants are concerned or fishing is concerned or um, say the habitat or the the ecosystems or the the uh, maintenance of the rivers and lakes are concerned we can come with a uh, certain uh, uh, the guidelines with respect to the environmental values specified environmental values are concerned and then human use values uh, like for say for example, water usage for agriculture or recreational use. So, accordingly we can put the uh, specific guidelines and then of course, uh, say some of the stringent measure guidelines will be for uh, drinking water supply. So, we should uh, meet uh, uh, specified uh, say, uh, quality requirement as far as the uh, drinking water usage is concerned. And then uh, say it can be for even for uh, cultural values say for example, say for religious purpose when we are using say some location of the river or uh, some uh, lakes. So, then we have to specify uh, say what, is, what are the water quality guidelines say for the particular use or particular uh, uh, say when we do monitoring or when we do sampling what should be the uh, guidelines. So, now uh, each of these environmental values requires its own specific uh, set of guidelines because the acceptable guidelines um, uh, say or guideline values uh, to maintain one type of environmental values may not be acceptable to maintain another environmental values. So, this environmental values uh, what we discussed uh, that depends upon the, the particular usage or particular source uh, like as we discussed say for example, uh, say um, and, uh, the, the if you consider pesticides levels say in the aquatic system say uh, this pesticide levels required to protect the fish and other fauna are usually lower than the those required for protection of irrigated crops. Say the pesticides which we are putting say to protect the, the, uh, the crops itself. So, for that the limits uh, for the crops or for the uh, uh, irrigation uh, issues are concerned that will be different. Uh, than what we consider the pesticides levels uh, say when we deal with the uh, fish uh, 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 fish habitats uh, or say other flo flora and fauna concerns. So, now another reason is that the indicators used to assess one environment values may be different to those used for other environmental values. So, uh, say it, uh, the environmental values say depending upon the source uh, of the water and then uh, the usage uh, this environmental values vary. Say for example, a key indicator for recreational use um, is uh, fecal bacteria numbers, but this indicator is not used for, for uh, most other environmental values uh, like um, agricultural purposes or um, uh, ecological needs. So, like that the water quality guidelines it will vary uh, or the, the environmental values which we have to specify that also uh, uh, varies. So, as far as water quality guidelines are concerned, um, uh, 
say uh, we have to uh, come up with uh, say uh, the rules and regulations or laws. So, uh, we have to come with come up with the uh, documents uh, as far as the uh, various um, uh, say usage or various um, sectors are concerned and then uh, this should be authorized by it should be from authorized agencies like pollution control boards or other uh, government agencies. So, that that can be imp strictly implemented uh, as far as the, the uh, various environmental values or various uh, guidelines are concerned. So, it can be for uh, ecosystem protection or say for example, recreational use say for example, guidelines for managing risk in recreational waters. So, say for example, if for uh, say uh, swimming purpose or is it is for um, uh, boating purpose. So, what kind of recreational use water is used? So, accordingly we can come up with um, uh, certain uh, uh, values or guidelines as far as the uh, environmental values are concerned. Then human consumptions like uh, national standards. So, of course, as we discussed say Bureau of Indian standards or uh, European standards or like that various uh, national standards are available say Australia, New Zealand food standards code etcetera. So, there accordingly we, we can set our uh, guidelines. Then uh, drinking water supply say for example, Indian water uh, drinking water guidelines uh, we, we can come up with uh, uh, specified guidelines and then we can see that these guidelines are met or not. And then as far as cultural values are concerned also um, uh, if you if it is required we can come up with uh, specified guidelines, but um, generally the, the, this we have to see that what quality is uh, met with respect to certain um, uh, standards, uh, but um, uh, strict and uh, strict and uh, strict regulations are not set as far as the cultural uh, values are uh, concerned. So, now let us look into uh, various steps in water quality management. So, while setting the water quality management guidelines or the environmental guidelines, so uh, we have to go um, in a systematic way step by step procedure should be adopted. So, that um, uh, we will be meeting the uh, say uh, the, uh, the international standards or international guidelines uh, say as far as the water quality is concerned. Uh, so, and then also uh, say the, the uh, we have to start with we have to first uh, uh, come up with a plan how to develop such uh, guidelines or the, the uh, say uh, to, to meet this uh, water quality uh, management issues. So, uh, we may have to interact with the, the various st stakeholders or we have to uh, uh, do lot of field survey and then uh, frame these laws and then put it to the public. The, the water quality management guidelines or environmental guidelines and then take their opinion also other than the of course, from the experts uh, we have to take the opinion and then finally, we have to come up with the guidelines um, as far as the water quality management is concerned and that should be publicized and then uh, we have to see that uh, these guidelines are met by various stakeholders like industries or, or the, the, the public. Uh, public are concerned. So, that way we have to go uh, th through a step by step procedure uh, as far as the water quality management is issues are concerned. So, here uh, say as per the Central Pollu Pollution Control Board uh, Government of India as uh, given in this uh, website. So, they have come up with uh, about uh, 11 steps as far as the the, the, the uh, water quality management is concerned. So, it, uh, it starts from uh, say step number 1 setting uh, water quality goal and then step number 2 water quality monitoring and then step number 3 identify of uh, identification of nature uh, and uh, magnitude of uh, pollution and then uh, uh, next one is source inventory and step number 5 uh, water quantity information say what uh, say uh, what is what kind of uh, what is what is the quantity of available water and what type of water whether it is surface water ground water or where is the source of this then step number 6 selection of technology step number 7 uh, financing uh, waste management step number 8 uh, maintenance of uh, sewage treatment plants Step number 9 uh, pollution from industrial sources, step number 10 pollution from non point sources and finally, uh, some other important uh, options for uh, water quality management. So, generally uh, say uh, when we are setting the, the guidelines for water quality management, uh, we have to come up with a document and then uh, the once the document is prepared. Uh, so, to assure this water quality the, the issues are. Uh, or water quality control measures are met, 
uh, we have to uh, say go through a systematic procedure. So, as uh, given by the Central Pollution Control Board Government of India. Uh, so, these are some of the eleven steps uh, which we have to follow as far as the water quality management is concerned. So, now uh, we will um, uh, discuss each of these steps uh, in detail, uh, so that um, we can understand uh, say how um, each steps are important and uh, what are the important things uh, we have to look when we look into the water quality management uh, issues are uh, concerned. So, this is actually uh, specifically made by Central Pollution Control Board Government of India and for other countries also there may be uh, these kinds of guidelines as far as the water quality management uh, issues are concerned. So, first let us look into step number 1. Uh, so, step number 1 is uh, uh, mainly setting the water quality goals. As we discussed uh, say before going for uh, any kind of um, uh, activities related to water quality management, we have to set the goals. So, these goals we can derive based upon the international standards like world health organizations or uh, FAO norms or various norms. So, uh, we can um, say study all these things and then what are the, the, the so depending upon the sources of water for specified usage or um, what kind of uh, according to what kind of intended use. So, we can uh, set our goals. So, once the water quality goals are set, we have to see uh, those goals we are meeting uh, for specified uses. So, now uh, let us look uh, say what are the important water quality goals which we have to set. First one is identification uses of water uh, in the given uh, say water body. Uh, so, uh, say like um, uh, say for example, river or la lake is concerned say uh, what are the uh, say specified uses as far as the uh, water is concerned whether it is uh, used for uh, irrigation purpose or it is uh, used for the drinking purpose or industrial uses like that. And then the term uh, quality therefore, must be considered uh, relative to the proposed uh, use of uh, water. So, uh, as we have seen uh, say each usage has got its own say spe specified um, norms are there. So, according to those norms uh, we have to see that um, we have to consider the uh, the, the, uh, the quality as far as when we set the water quality goals. Uh, water quality uh, say as we discussed earlier is defined as those um, physical, chemical or biological uh, characteristics of water by which uh, the user uh, evaluates the acceptability of water. So, depending upon uh, whether it is for dinging purpose or whether it is irrigation purpose or for industrial purpose uh, 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 say we will be setting certain goals or certain norms or certain criteria. And then accordingly uh, the, the uh, whether we are meeting those uh, specified criteria, so the user can uh, evaluate. So, that way the setting of the water quality goals uh, are very uh, important. So, each water use has uh, specific uh, water quality needs. So, as we already discussed earlier. Uh, so, say for example, designated best use means out of several uses uh, a particular uh, water body is put to the use which uh, demands highest quality of water is called uh, its designated best use. Say for example, if you consider the, consider the water in a reservoir. So, the designated best use, so the water in the, from the reservoir may be used for drinking purpose, may be used for irrigation purpose, uh, uh, may be used for recreational purposes. Say out of this uh, say, uh, say for example, the water quality goals are concerned may be most uh, say uh, the most important goals will be as far as the drinking water purposes. So, that way uh, uh, the highest quality uh, 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 of the water is um, say what is needed is for drinking purpose. So, that norms uh, we have we will be keeping and uh, uh, that is the uh, designated uh, best use as far as the that uh, the, the water in the uh, reservoir is uh, concerned. So, as we discussed earlier say according to Central Pollution Control Board uh, Government of India uh, um, based upon the uh, use uh, various classifications uh, have been done. So, this uh, we have already discussed earlier. So, um, accordingly uh, five classes of um, uh, water we can define A, B, C, D, E. So, the designated best use say for example, drinking water source uh, which is class A. Uh, the, the criteria can be the total coliform organisms. Um, so, this should be 100 ml or so uh, say per 100 ml shall be uh, 50 or less 
uh, then pH should be between 6.5 to 8.5, dissolved oxygen should be 6 milligram per liter or more, uh, BOD should be 5 days, uh, uh, 20 degree centigrade should be le uh, less than 2 milligram per liter. So, like that say this is for drinking water use and class, class A water as per general pollution control board norms. Then uh, class B is outdoor bathing. Uh, so, here uh, say the no, no criteria related to total coliform or, um, organisms uh, uh, say should be uh, le le less than 500 uh, per, per 100 ml water and pH is same 6.5 to 8.5 and dissolved oxygen should be uh, say 5, 5 milligram per liter or more and uh, uh, BOD should be 3 milligram per liter or less. So, this is for class B which is for outdoor bathing. Uh, then uh, class C is for drinking water source after conventional treatments and disinfection. So, the water which is taken from here will be going through a treatment process and then uh, it will be also disinfection also will be done. So, there the say for as far as the source is concerned the, uh, the total uh, coliform uh, say organisms uh, per 100 ml shall be uh, say for example, 5000 or less and pH can be 6 to 9. Uh, dissolved oxygen 4 milligram per liter or more and uh, BOD 3 milligram per liter or less. So, but here uh, this water as shown here this uh, water will be going through conventional treatments and disinfection. So, that way uh, say the, no, the whatever the requirement will be met, uh, but in the class A it is uh, same uh, only disinfection is done, but no other treatment is uh, done. And then class D, it is uh, for propagation of uh, wildlife and uh, fisheries. So, there the pH can be between 6.25 to 8.5 dissolved oxygen uh, should be 4, 4 milligram per liter or more. Uh, then uh, like uh, free ammonia is concerned 1.2 milligram per liter or less, like that various norms can be there. And then the last one is um, class E, where water for irrigation or industrial cooling or controlled um, uh, waste disposal there uh, again pH electrical conductivity uh, pH can be same range electrical conductivity can be up to uh, maximum 2250 uh, and then uh, sodium absorption ratio maximum 26 uh, like that. So, like that uh, we can uh, say based upon the, the class of water or the based upon the source or based upon the, the uh, indebted use. Uh, we can set the criteria and that will say accordingly the water quality goals uh, uh, in the st first step we can set and that will be the, the deciding criteria later stage uh, to see that whether this quality goals are met uh, or not met. So, then that is about the first step, first step was on setting water quality goals and now second one is uh, say water quality monitoring. So, once we set the goals, so as we discussed in the step number 1, so now uh, say uh, various uh, sources like surface water sources like uh, rivers, lakes or reservoirs or the ground water aquifers, uh, we have to continuously monitor for the water quality and then see that uh, say for the intended use the, the quality is uh, meeting that particular uh, goals or particular values, so that we have to see. So, that way step number 2 is also a, a very important. Um, so, for acquiring information on existing water quality, so what is the present stage? So, we have to go for sampling and then we have to see uh, whether the particular samples are meeting the criteria. So, main objectives for water quality monitoring uh, can be monitoring for establishing uh, baseline water quality. Uh, so, certain minimum um, baseline we can keep and then we can see whether that we are meeting. Then observing trends in water quality changes say, uh, say from one season to another season say so from um, uh, summer to monsoon season or monsoon to uh, say, um, uh, say spring season or winter season how the, the parameters are changing. So, that way observing the trends and then calculation of flux of water constituents of interest and then a surveillance for irrigation use then control and management of water pollution say ground water only say as far as the uh, if any pollutant source is there how we can control it and then how we can go for remediation. So, like that um, we have to do the uh, water quality monitoring and we have to get the information. 
So, water collecting, so water quality monitoring is concerned also uh, there are certain specified protocols uh, have been specified by various agencies like in India central pollution control board. So, uh, we have to see that um, uh, these um, protocols are met uh, when we are taking samples and then uh, uh, when we are measuring it and then uh, try to uh, say uh, put into uh, as far as the set goals are concerned. Then uh, design approach and uh, delineation of actions necessary to operationalize the uh, monitoring program. So, we should have network uh, for of collection of the samples and then monitoring it continuously uh, say specified days or specified um, uh, periods and then uh, uh, this data should be uh, available. So, ready reference for the field staff should be there, uh, field staff or laboratory personnel uh, should be the, uh, the, or managers should be there as far as monitoring programs are concerned. So, uh, we have to set guidelines, we have to set the, the norms uh, for water quality monitoring and that norms the, uh, the field personnel or the laboratory person who say field person collect the samples and laboratory persons uh, say uh, test these samples and the managers are controlling all those things. So, that way uh, ready reference should be available as far as the various norms or various guidelines as far as uh, water quality monitoring is concerned. So, in the as far as water quality monitoring is concerned the various steps are free. So, we have to see the frequency of monitoring and then what are the important parameters to be considered as far as the monitoring is concerned and then uh, the uh, we have to specify the, uh, the sample collection procedure and then uh, how to uh, keep the samples and then how to take into lab and then how to analyze the samples and then how we can record it appropriately so that um, uh, the this this will be uh, the available as guidelines and that uh, the field staff or the laboratory personnel or the managers will be uh, say controlling uh, the things according to the uh, the set uh, guidelines as far as uh, water quality uh, monitoring is concerned so now as far as monitoring is concerned uh, uh, so there are certain specified protocols uh, related to uh, the uh, frequency uh, say how many times um, in a week or in a day uh, or in a season we have to collect the samples and then uh, what, are the, what are the important parameters uh, we have to uh, test. So, accordingly uh, specified uh, monitoring protocols are available. So, let us look into some of these important protocols as specified by Central Pollution Control Board. Say for example, if ground water is concerned uh, say uh, initially all stations will be classified as uh, baseline stations. So, as far as ground water is concerned we may select the uh, we may collect the samples from dug well or bore well or very deep tube wells and then initially we keep these um, um, stations as baseline stations and about 20 to 25 percent of these baseline stations um, will also be classified as trend or uh, trend comes surveillance stations. So, in uh, about uh, one fourth of this um, baseline station we uh, very frequently or we, uh, say uh, we take the samples and uh, monitor in a very systematic way uh, and uh, so that we, we can identify how is the trend as far as the water quality is concerned. So, uh, this can with this, these stations we can call it as trend come surveillance uh, stations. Uh, then uh, um, say after a few years say for example, 3 years uh, as per as specified by central pollution control board uh, say these stations we can reclassify and then uh, maybe some other stations uh, can be uh, chosen uh, say as far as whether it is as a baseline station or surveillance um, uh, stations are concerned. Uh, now, as far as uh, surface water is concerned to start with all stations uh, will be in combinations of baseline and uh, trend stations. So, as far as the, uh, the wherever from wherever we take the samples uh, say we can classify as either baseline stations or the trend stations. So, uh, the we can have a combinations of uh, this baseline and uh, trend stations and then samples uh, will be collected uh, uh, say at least every two months say like uh, say in India uh, during May, June or uh, then uh, August, October, December, February. Uh, April uh, like that 
So, this is according to the seasonal variation like monsoon season uh, or this is May, June say summer season then monsoon season then um, uh, spring season, autumn season uh, like that. So, the samples will be collected. This will generate uh, at least uh, 6 samples from say for example, reverse circumstance perennial reverse and uh, 3, 4 samples from seasonal reverse every year. So, accordingly when we collect the samples and then uh, monitoring. So, we get um, large number of samples um, and then uh, uh, say we will get uh, the data uh, in a systematic way uh, from this uh, either baseline stations or the uh, uh, trend uh, uh, stations. Then after the data are collected for say for example, 3 years the station will be classified either as baseline or trend or flux stations. So, according to the guidelines specified by central pollution uh, control board. So, we can say for surface water or ground water is concerned, we can have the baseline stations or the uh, trend come surveillance stations and then uh, this can be uh, say can vary say, say uh, we can rotate between those stations uh, say for particular area or particular zones or particular um, region is concerned, uh, we can have uh, that kind of flexibility. So, that way uh, we have to uh, strictly follow the water quality monitoring protocol and then uh, so also we have to see this frequency say how, say how frequently we are collecting the samples and analyzing and then what kind of parameters uh, we will be looking. So, that uh, definitely depends upon what the intended use say for example, it is for drinking water purpose there will be the parameters will be number of parameters will be more and the frequency should be more, but to say for example, irrigation or uh, say uh, uh, recreational purpose the frequency can be uh, less uh, like that. So, now say for example, the various uh, parameters say for example, ground water if you are collecting ground water for uh, various uses say for example, the type of stations can be baseline or trend or trend come uh, su surveillance and then a frequency can be for baseline it can be uh, once every year or pre monsoon uh, say mainly between May and June and various parameters like temperature, electric conductivity, uh, pH etcetera we can uh, look into. Then trend uh, uh, say uh, generally it can be 4 times every year pre monsoon. Uh, May, June and after intervals of 3 months. So, uh, all these parameters some of the important parameters uh, which we will be uh, checking uh, or monitoring. Then trend come surveillance stations here uh, minimum 4 times a year we have to collect the data and then uh, we have to analyze for various important parameters like fluoride, iron, uh, industrial mining, or salinity etcetera and these are some of the important parameters like uh, uh, iron content, arsenic, um, say cadmium, uh, say uh, mercury etcetera and total and um, uh, fecal coliforms etcetera. So, that way depending upon whether it is surface water or ground water, uh, we can identify the type of stations and then frequency and the uh, parameters. So, that was about for the ground water. Now, say in this slide say if you consider the parameters analysis for surface water. So, surface water say here again the parameters are grouped uh, then initially the various parameters then baseline or trench. So, generally what we do for temperature and electrical conductivity pH dissolved oxygen total dissolved solids uh, for all. Uh, then uh, nutrients are concerned various initially or baseline trench and organic matter is concerned uh, say initially we have to check BOD, COD. Uh, then uh, again trend is concerned BOD, COD. So, then major ions. Uh, other inorganic circumstances how to deal then micro uh, biological uh, parameters are concerned like total coliforms or total and fecal coliforms how to deal. Uh, so, like that then biological are concerned generally uh, say, uh, uh, say none of these things are considered since we assume that this thing biological things uh, para the, the uh, th things are not there with for the particular water we uh, consider say for the intended use. So, now uh, as far as this step is concerned uh, the, the water uh, uh, quality monitoring is concerned another important issue is that um, uh, how to uh, say take the samples. So, sample collection is uh, one of the important issue. So, that we have to collect these samples appropriately, uh, store it appropriately and then send to the laboratories for various um, testing purposes. So, that we will get the appropriate um, uh, results uh, which we through which we can make sure that the guidelines are uh, met or not. Uh, 
so now the sample collections are concerned uh, say reaching sample site using location maps. So, so particular locations say specified by the state control board, pollution control board or central pollution control board. Uh, how to reach those uh, sampling sites so that will be available. Then uh, uh, we can use specified sampling bottles depending upon the intended um, uh, uh, say water quality uh, which we are going to check. So, first we rinse the sample container three times with the sample before it is filled. Then uh, leave a uh, small air, air space in the bottle to allow uh, mixing of sample at the time of analysis. Then the sample code and the sampling uh, the data should be uh, clearly marked on the sample container or the tag so that um, uh, everything will be met properly so that um, uh, say the, the particular uh, uh, say we, we identify uh, the site location through specified codes and dates uh, like that. Then samples for groundwater say for example would be collected from say open deck wells or tube wells uh, in use for domestic or irrigation purposes. Then the samples will be collected from well mixed section of the river say for example main stream or consent 30 centimeter below the water surface using a, weight, uh, a weighted bottle or dissolved oxygen sampler. Then samples from reservoir sites will be collected from the uh, outgoing canal or power channel or water in deck structure. So, like that there will be uh, say, uh, say specified environmental guidelines or guidelines will be there for sample collections. So, frequency of the sampling and then uh, the analysis are concerned. So, all those things we have to uh, meet in this uh, step number 2. Now, the step, step number 3 is identification of nature and the magnitude of pollution. So, here after uh, repeated observations or water quality covering different seasons, the water quality data should be uh, compiled and uh, compared with the desired quality requirement as per the water quality goals set in step number 1. So, here um, say we have to um, do the testing and then uh, see that whether water quality criteria are met. So, this way the polluter, polluted uh, water body can be easily identified. So, um, where is the particular location say surface water ground what is concerned where it is polluted. Then this comparison would lead to identification of the gaps with respect to one or more parameters and also extent of gap. Uh, which will ultimately help in identification of nature and magnitude of uh, pollution uh, control uh, needed. So, that is the identification of nature and magnitude of uh, pollution step number 3 is concerned. Now, step number 4 is related to the source inventory. So, once the nature and magnitude of pollution is identified, the sources of such a pollution are identified. Uh, then uh, in inventory we have to uh, make an inventory of the, the number of outfalls joining the water body for identification of point uh, sources. So, from where this pollution is coming, how say how the movement is taking place. So, we, all this we have to identify. So, source inventory should be there. So, measure the uh, uh, quality and quantity of waste water flowing through each of these outfalls and then for each outfall um, pollution load joining per unit time should be measured in terms of important pollutants. Uh, so, this exercise requires continuous sampling say for example, uh, 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours like one day, two day or three days uh, on flow based uh, uh, composite basis. So, accordingly uh, we have to see, then we have to make the in inventories. So, inventory is the human activities in the, the uh, upstream catchment area of the water body to identify the non point source of pollution. So, the pollution uh, source once we identify, we have to identify whether it is point source or it is non point source of pollution and then again we have to continuously monitor and take samples and then look say from where it is coming from and how the movement is taking place. So, that we can go for various measures. And then next one is step number 5, the water quantity information. So, this issues we have already discussed earlier. So, in case of river or stream, we have to acquire the uh, flow data from various government sources uh, and then see how the system is um, say um, the source of water. In case of lakes and reservoirs, we have to collect the information on water levels of at least uh, 5 to 10 years, then carry out mass balance, then estimate the, uh, the least dilution available in last 5 years then assess the assimilation capacity by applying simple street for street or Phelps equation say for example, dissolved oxygen is concerned. Then this exercise would give precisely how much pollution load needs to be reduced. Then uh, say in case of river or stream, uh, we have to acquire the flow data and then in case of lakes, um, uh, we get the data and then uh, 
Step number six is selection of um, uh, say technology. So, what kind of technologies we have to choose uh, to reduce the the pollution or to to uh, the to, to uh, say improve the water quality. So, here uh, the adoption of simple technology for sewage treatment. So, mainly the wastewater treatment is concerned how to treat the sewage. Then a treatment scheme based on a series of waste st stabilization ponds technology. Uh, and we have to look for most economical ones. Then multiple stage ponds say uh, with uh, for, say for example, at least three ponds with the first pond as uh, anaerobic and one is the most widely used and suitable configuration. And then use of low volume flushing tanks will help in reducing the waste water volume uh, and thereby cost of sewage and then sewage treatment. So, like that we have to uh, select this specified uh, technology. So, some of the cost effective and environmental compatible treatment options uh, can be like land treatments, uh, waste stabilization ponds, constructed wetlands, duck weed ponds, aerated lagoon, uh, rotating biological co co contractors, uh, upflow anaerobic sludge blanket systems, root zone uh, treatment like that. So, accordingly uh, the suitable uh, technology we can choose for the specified uh, case and then uh, we can reduce the, the, uh, the pollutant load coming to the system. And step number 7 is financing the waste management. So, we have to see how, say how much money is available, how we can uh, economically do the things. So, in India with uh, fast urbanization waste water quantity is approximately about 13,000 million liters per day. So, each million liters per day cost about uh, rupees 10 millions for uh, establishing the treatment facilities and about 40 millions for collection facilities. Then operational maintenance may vary about 10 percent uh, of the uh, above cost. The major part of the cost on waste management should be borne by urban uh, population according to the polluter pay principle. So, now uh, most of the environmental guidelines or water quality guidelines we uh, stick into polluter pay principle. So, accordingly we have to uh, see the, the financing uh, of the uh, water quality or waste management is concerned. So, polluter pay principle ha has two benefits, it uh, reduces waste and treatment and can provide source of revenue for financing wastewater treatment uh, investment. So, like that uh, we can uh, look into the financing waste management. Then pricing and demand management is concerned, um, we have to see that um, important instruments for encouraging efficient domestic and industrial water use practice are um, maintained and then uh, we can induce uh, urban organizations to adopt uh, water saving technologies including water recycling and reuse. So, these are the two keywords like uh, recycling and reuse. Then demand management uh, programs like a promotion and distribution of, or sale of water saving devices. Then the waste management benefits uh, say like uh, the benefits will be for local citizens protection of environment, protection of public health, protection of water resources, then uh, water supply uh, like that. Then uh, step number 8 uh, maintenance of uh, sewage treatment plants. So, uh, say uh, we have to see that a regular analysis of operational parameters are done. Uh, so, that uh, the we, we keep the strict maintenance of the, the treatment plants, then persons should uh, um, have um, adequate knowledge and uh, uh, we have to train uh, to operate the, uh, the severe treatment plants uh, uh, and then there should be provision of uh, auxiliary power backup then proper maintenance of the sewage system uh, namely sewers, rising mains, intermediate pumping stations, then uh, resource recovery by way of raising the revenue through sale of treated effluent for irrigation. So, like that uh, we can see that the uh, we have to maintain the sewage treatment plants appropriately. So, that is about the step number 8 when we prepare the guidelines. And step number 9 is uh, pollution from industrial sources. So, pollution uh, say generally industrial sources are concerned we can control the pollution at source itself through uh, various treatment procedure. So, the water pollu polluting industries uh, which had uh, uh, not so far installed um, environment treatment effluent treatment plants uh, should be effluent treatment plants should be asked to furnish a time bound program for treatment of their effluents. So, this we have to put it in the guidelines and then strictly implement. Then emerging technology such as aer aerobic composting, vermiculture, fertility ir irrigation etcetera uh, and then uh, secondary treatment all the secondary treatment like um, using the uh, uh, wastewater for irrigation purpose or vermiculture should be uh, uh, adopted for the organic waste. 
Then uh, roots on technology is also being advocated for energy saving for treatment of uh, industrial uh, wastewater. And then incentives we have to uh, give for uh, uh, the industry which give which uh, go for appropriate um, pollution control measures. So, that is also important. Then uh, reuse and recycling uh, we have to say now the, uh, the main motto is zero uh, waste um, discharge. So, that is our um, 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 uh, the, the, the motto of most of the, uh, the industries. So, that we can achieve through reuse and recycling uh, of the industrial uh, waste waters. The reuse and recycling of waste for agricultural purposes help to reduce the pollution, reduces the requirement of uh, fresh water for uh, use and supplement the much needed nutrients. Then uh, waste minimization and uh, uh, clean technologies like uh, recycling techniques which this recycling and reuse we will be discussing later in uh, another module uh, somewhat, somewhat more details will be uh, discussed. Then uh, waste strength reductions, then uh, wastewater discharge standards and um, charges on uh, residual population, uh, pollution, uh, residual pollution. So, like that uh, we can uh, look into. Then uh, tenth step is pollution from non-point sources. So, another important source of pollution is non-point source. So, this is extremely important to focus attention upon the problem of non-point uh, pollution from uh, like uh, unsevered uh, sanitation, uncollected uh, waste dumped uh, half, uh, half sadly in urban and uh, industrial areas and application of chemicals in agriculture such as pesticides, insecticides and chemical fertilizers. Then presence of unacceptable uh, high levels uh, of the persistent pollutants in ground water or, or surface water. Then uh, the pest management is concerned, integrated pest management policy sh sh we can evo in, uh, evolve. Uh, so, that um, uh, say we, we can use very less pesticides uh, for the, the control of the, the, the pest. Then uh, the last one is other important options for water quality management include uh, say as, as we uh, discussed the reuse and recycling of treat, treated domestic sewage. Uh, so, these issues we will be discussing later in a later module. Then encourage participatory approach with involvement of all relevant stakeholders then uh, balance economic and regulatory uh, instruments and prevent pollution uh, rather than uh, control. So, the main motto should be we have to reduce or we have to prevent the pollution uh, or the say when we deal with water quality management our environmental guidelines or water quality guidelines the main motto is prevent the pollution uh, than the controlling. So, say once polluted uh, to uh, remediation or that is very difficult. So, first um, we have to prevent the pollution to the, the environment either to the land or to the aquatic systems or to the to the soil, uh, then uh, say uh, we, uh, we have to have very strict rules and regulations or guidelines uh, we have to set up and then this environmental guidelines should uh, be strictly implemented through various monitoring um, or the say uh, the, the, uh, the bodies like a central pollution control board or state pollution control board should take appropriate actions to uh, implement uh, uh, these guidelines uh, very uh, strictly. So, some of the references used for today's lecture mainly from um, say central pollution control board websites and then EPA websites. Then a few uh, questions say for tutorial questions, critically study the environmental guidelines for water quality management for India and compare with the standards of USA. So, these details are available in the website. So, uh, study this and compare. The study the various measures that can be adopted to improve the water quality management guidelines say for example, India. So, what is there you study and then compare and how we can improve. Then a few self evaluations or assignment questions illustrate the importance of uh, watershed uh, based water quality management. Then what are the important goals of uh, water quality guidelines, discuss on uh, water quality monitoring protocol frequency and parameters for surface water and ground water. And then uh, what are the important features of uh, environmental water quality, discuss on the important steps to be followed in water quality management as per central pollution control board norms. Uh, illustrate the selection of technologies uh, for uh, wastewater management. So, all these uh, details uh, we, we can uh, you can get from today's lecture or through the various sources as I mentioned. So, with this um, uh, the module on uh, water quality management is over. So, we, we, we discussed uh, the issues related to water quality management in four lectures. So, now we will be going to the uh, next module. Uh, so, thank you.